Welcome to the UC San Diego Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center Brain Blast Series. My name is James Brewer, and I'm the director of the UC San Diego Department of Neurosciences and the Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. I'm a professor of neurology, a clinical neurologist, and a brain imaging researcher. I'm pleased to present to you our virtual Brain Blast series. Each of the talks included in the series have been created by Shiley Marcos ADRC colleagues with expertise in brain aging research that focuses on prevention, detection, diagnosis, and treatment of Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. Each of the experts featured in the series studies a unique aspect of brain aging and has developed a brief overview of their current research to highlight the state-of-the-art work that's going on here at UCSD and our center. We hope you'll take advantage of this free resource to learn more about the advances in brain aging, the importance of research, and the multitude of opportunities to get involved and participate in research studies. Hi, I'm Dr. Dean Ornish. I'm a clinical professor of medicine at UC San Diego as well as at UCSF. And I'm here to talk about an exciting new study that we're in the middle of doing to see whether comprehensive lifestyle changes may stop or maybe even reverse the progression of men and women who have early stage Alzheimer's disease. I have a particular interest in this because my mom died of Alzheimer's and all of her siblings and I have one of the genes for it. Now, it's easy to get discouraged because there are no drugs that can even stop the disease from getting worse, but we think that perhaps we might be able to stop and maybe even reverse it. And the reason is, is that I began doing research over 40 years ago. Uh, we found that a program of simple lifestyle changes, basically a whole foods plant-based diet that's low in fat and sugar, mostly fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and soy products, along with moderate exercise, you know, walking a half an hour a day, plus some stress management techniques, including meditation, and love and support with spending more time with friends and families and our support groups, sort of reduce it to its essence to eat well, move more, stress less, and love more, that these same lifestyle changes 40 years ago we found could actually reverse the progression of even severe coronary heart disease. We were actually the first to prove that. At that time, it was thought that once you had heart disease, it could only get worse. Maybe you could slow down the rate at which you got worse, get worse more slowly, but that was about as good as you could do. We found that more intensive lifestyle changes could actually reverse it. We found that within just a month, the blood flow to the heart improved and there was a 90% reduction in angina or chest pain. After a year, even severely clogged arteries became measurably less clogged compared to the control group that got worse during that time. And after five years, we found there was even more reversal than after one year. And we published our findings in the leading peer-reviewed medical journals, like the Journal of the American Medical Association, the Lancet, and others. And, um, you know, it's, I think it's a good example of ounce of prevention and pound of cure. It's hard to reverse a life-threatening disease. We found these same lifestyle changes over time could reverse type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity. We found when you change your lifestyle, it changes your genes, turns on the good genes that keep us healthy, turns off the ones that cause us to get sick, particularly the genes that promote chronic inflammation and oxidative stress and other mechanisms that underlie so many of these different conditions. We did the first randomized trial showing these same lifestyle changes could stop or even reverse the progression of men who have early stage prostate cancer in collaboration with the chairs of urology at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York and at University of California, San Francisco. We did a study with uh, Dr. Craig Venter, who was the first to decode the human genome, that when you change your lifestyle, over 500 genes are changed. In effect, as I mentioned, turning on the good genes, turning off the bad ones. In just three months, you know, I was told, like so many people, that Oh, I've just got bad genes, you know, what can you do? Well, it turns out you can do a lot. Again, not to blame, but to empower. We did a study with Dr. Elizabeth Blackburn, who's the got the Nobel Prize for discovering telomeres, the ends of our chromosomes that regulate aging. And we found that uh, we could actually lengthen telomeres. And when we published this in The Lancet, the editors called it first study showing that lifestyle changes may reverse aging on a cellular level. And I think we're in a place with Alzheimer's very reminiscent of where we were with heart disease 40 years ago. The same, you know, what's good for your heart is good for your brain and, and vice versa. It takes a lot to reverse a chronic disease. Think of like ounce of prevention, pound of cure. This is more the pound of cure. But if you're willing to make big enough changes, we hope that 
there might be some improvement. We don't know yet. That's the whole point of, of doing the study. And uh, these same mechanisms that affect heart disease and diabetes and prostate cancer and so on also affect Alzheimer's as well. And so we've designed a study where we're recruiting a total of 100 men and women who have early stage Alzheimer's disease with uh, mild cognitive impairment. And we're asking, we're randomly dividing them into two groups for the first 20 weeks. Half get, we're asked to make this, uh, this intensive lifestyle change, which I should mention also, Medicare created a new benefit category to cover this program for reversing heart disease. It was the first time that Medicare did anything like that. And just a couple of months ago, they agreed to cover the same program when offered virtually via Zoom as when it's done in hospitals and clinics and, and doctor's offices. And so for the last two years, we've been working with the first group of patients in our Alzheimer's study, uh, randomly dividing them into two groups. One group gets the lifestyle intervention for 20 weeks, and the other group we say, just do what you've been doing. We test both groups at the beginning and after 20 weeks, and we compare them. And then the first group who was in the control group, now they get the program for a total of 40 weeks. The first group gets it for 20 more weeks for a total of 40 weeks, and then we test them again, and we compare them. That way, everybody gets the program. One group just has to wait 20 weeks to do that. Now, we're looking for people who are age 45 to 90 who have, again, mild cognitive impairment or MCI or mild dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. And we're doing this in collaboration with Dr. Douglas Galasco, who's one of the senior neurologists at UC San Diego, and also the senior neurologist at Harvard Medical School and the Mass General Hospital, um, and also a renowned health center in, uh, in Nevada as well as in the uh, University of California, San Francisco. Um, we're, uh, you know, again, it's all done via Zoom. We were meeting with people in person, but when COVID hit uh, two years ago, we decided we would all do it all via Zoom. So you can now do this from the privacy of your own home. Uh, we provide you and your spouse or caregiver 21 meals a week to make it really easy to stay on the program. Um, you need to live with a spouse or or a caregiver in order to be eligible. We found that it's, it's just hard to do it by yourself. Uh, there's no cost to you for any of these things. And we ask you to meet three times a week for four hours at a time where we kind of go through the lifestyle changes with you to make it easier. The three primary tests that we're using are the same tests that are used in FDA drug trials. Uh, the ADS-COG, the clinical dementia rating, and the clinical global impression of change scores. Um, as well as we're looking at some of the biomarkers, again, changes in telomeres and gene expression and the microbiome uh, and, and things like that to get a better idea of what some of these mechanisms are. Now, I can't really talk too much about the interim findings, but we're very encouraging. We're, many of the patients, but not all of them, are beginning to show some improvement. And that's particularly exciting because, as you probably know, there are no drugs that can even stop the disease from getting worse. Um, I, again, 44 years ago, it was the same with heart disease. It was thought that the best you could do would be to slow it down, which is what a lot of people think about Alzheimer's. But we already know that moderate changes do slow the progression of dementia. Our theory is that more intensive ones might stop or reverse it. And so, again, we're encouraged by our interim findings. Unlike most uh, interventions, the only side effects here are good ones. And I hope that if you're interested in learning more about our program, I hope that you'll give us a call. You can reach us at, uh, you can reach me on my email at dean.ornish at pmri.org, or you can just give us a call, 415-332-2525, extension 255. Thank you so much. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation from our UC San Diego Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center Virtual Brain Blast Series. Please look for other presentations in this series and share them with your communities. We hope that you'll also consider participating with, in brain research studies. We always have new opportunities for participation and are actively seeking individuals 65 and older without memory disorders, as well as those with a diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment or Alzheimer's disease and related dementias, such as frontotemporal dementia, Lewy body dementia, and Parkinson's dementia, as well as others. We're also proud to have a bilingual, bicultural team who conducts studies, visits in Spanish. Your participation can make a real difference for future generations. Please click on the description below to complete the very brief survey about the presentation you just viewed. And for those who are interested and who live in San Diego, we'll be happy to contact you 
simply provide your contact information on the secure survey. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.